Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Midweek Online. Uh, my name is Richard. I'm one of the Associate Ministers here, and I'm joined um, by Andrew and John and Fee. And we're going to be thinking a little bit about um, our habits as we emerge from restrictions. Um, I'd love to encourage us to think a bit about how our habits have changed in the past year. Our habits are really important, aren't they? We know that with, we know that with our physical bodies, that um, yeah, our habits affect how we grow. And it's the same with our spiritual lives, isn't it? Um, our habits do play a, a role in, in our, our spiritual growth. Um, I'd just love to encourage you to think um, this past year has been difficult in all sorts of ways, and it's perhaps knocked us out of shape um, uh, in different ways through the, the lockdowns and the restrictions. Um, I wonder how your habits have changed um, throughout these lockdowns. And now that, now that restrictions are easing, I know in my own experience, the, the first lockdown, I, in a sense, I had, I had more time to spend um, in God's word, reading and, and praying each day and spending time with my children, um, reading God's words. I think that was a really, I had some really good habits in place. But I think as restrictions have eased um, recently, other things have come in and, and crowded out some of that time and made um, keeping and maintaining those habits more difficult. And we'd love to encourage you um, as you watch this to think, how have you, what good habits have you formed throughout this time? What, uh, and what ways are the, what difficult difficulties have you found in, in having habits that will help you to thrive as a Christian? Um, that's what, that's what we want, isn't it? To, to be thriving and growing as Christians um, for the glory of our Saviour. Um, habits that can um, uh, help us, uh, habits in daily prayer and in God's word, it's really worth thinking about and as the restrictions ease, what habits can we be putting in place that will help us to grow and thrive as God's people? Um, Andrew, um, what would you like to add um, as we think about this area of habits as restrictions ease? Yeah, I'd echo all of that. And I think, I think just one other aspect of those habits, I guess for all of us, um, me included, our, our Sunday habits have been reshaped this year. Um, I guess in some really big ways and probably ways that are different um, for lots of us, um, whether that's uh, because we're not back at church in person yet, or we've just started coming back in the last few weeks, um, or we've been back a long time, but obviously it's only been every other week. And so that's given us kind of different habits for Sundays that mm -hmm. different to those we've perhaps built up um, before we knew anything about coronavirus and I'm always struck in Hebrews 10 um, where the writer talks about habits um, and he says Hebrews 10 uh, verse 24 let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near and it's really striking to me that the habit that the writer of the Hebrews has in mind is the habit of not meeting together as God's people, which is the habit that almost by necessity we've been forced into to some extent mm -hmm. over this past year, whether we've liked it or not. Um, even just only being able to come once a fortnight um, is a habit. Uh, and we're so pleased and so thankful to the Lord that God willing in a few weeks time um, come that 25th of July, we'll be able to be back in church in person every week. Um, we'd love you to book in for that uh, through the church office for one of those two morning services. But it's an opportunity, I guess, for all of us uh, to just reflect on what am I expecting on Sunday? What am I thinking as I come to church um, as well? Not just wanting to be there every week, but how am I approaching being there every week? Mm -hmm. um, I guess lots of us will just know the experience of maybe just feeling a bit underwhelmed by church in this past year. Um, and perhaps I need to take and we need to take the opportunity to remind ourselves of the huge privilege that church is um, because uh, sinful people like, like me, um, washed clean by the blood of Jesus can come before the living God uh, as his people. And as well, just remembering 
uh, it's a huge gift to us. We need church. We need to be fed from the Lord's word. We need one another. Um, and other people need us. And that's why it's so important that, that when we can be, we do um, form that habit again of being with one another every Sunday um, for our good, for others' good, for the Lord's glory. Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, thank you for that reminder. Uh, very helpful reminder. Um, Fee, what would you want to add um, about loving each other well as these restrictions ease? Yeah, I think um, one of the verses that I've been uh, considering um, uh, is John 13, verse 34, uh, where Jesus says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you are also to love one another. And I think that helps us as we begin to think about coming back into the buildings um, and in how we um, love other um, believers. So how did Christ love us? He laid down his life for us. Sacrificial love is what Jesus then calls us to in this particular verse. Loving our brothers and sisters in Christ when it's costly, when it's uncomfortable, when we might not naturally get along with others, when it's awkward. Through lockdown, we have seen more and more our church family reaching out to each other. We have seen the spirit at work in others producing fruits of sacrificial service to others. They've provided meals, they've done shopping, they've bubbled um, with those who are by themselves. So the call, I think, as we come out of lockdown will look much the same. It will be sacrificial for some of our family to join us when we're all back in the building. Um, either through it being an easy, easy to join in with church online or because joining in online is safe. And so the sacrifice for those people in our family will be to trust God and seek to look after the rest of the church family by coming along to the central meetings. Mm. Um, and perhaps that is then for them, it's reinvesting um, in fellowship, perhaps that's now lost, looking to love others as Christ is calling us to. For others in our church family, the call is uh, to love one another, especially those who are anxious about returning. This may mean holding back from uh, exuberant hugging that might cause uh, stress to some. It may mean moving forward gently as safety restrictions ease for the sake of our less secure brothers and sisters. We are looking forward to practicing this command from Jesus as we emerge from lockdown to its fullest extent. So we'll be able to sacrifice more freely our time, our energy, our money, our comfort zones, our homes. And I know better than anyone, I've got the, my home is uh, my castle syndrome. Mm. Um, we're not going to find it comfortable um, to sacrifice in these ways. It's going to be awkward. It may be inconvenient. And so we need to uh, pray. Uh, it's okay, I'll just say a quick prayer at this point uh, for us all, because I think it's so important. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, please, in your mercy, work in us by your Holy Spirit to produce that fruit of love that looks most like the sacrificial love you have shown to us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Fee. Um, yeah, really striking, actually, for um, that in times like this, when we're when our, when our lives are, are thrown into a change, I guess, like, like they have in the past year, it's really helpful to remember, um, to remember God's love, remember that he's our rock, he's got us, um, but also to remember what he's, what he's created us for, to know him and love him uh, and to glorify him and to love other people um, mm. and uh, to, to shine out that love um, in, in the world, in the situations that he puts us in. Just really important to remember what our great purpose is in life. Um, John, any words of wisdom to add in? How can we, um, what habits can we form? Uh, what habits are important as, we're, as these res restrictions are easing? Yeah, thanks, Richard. So um, I I've been thinking a little bit about um, our non-Christian friends and contacts and how we approach um, the routines and getting back to seeing those guys. I think at the moment, obviously, even in this call, we've had encouragements to um, Christian fellowship, especially coming back to church on Sundays. 
um, also to meeting up with other people, having them around. Um, but what about our non-Christian friends? Where do they fit in our list of priorities? Because we all have um, a limited amount of time off and we don't want to go out every night of the week or have people around to our house every night of the week. It's not possible, is it? Also, um, if we do have people over or go out for a drink or a coffee or whatever, it costs money, doesn't it? So why would we do that with non-Christian friends? Um, shouldn't we just save that money maybe and give it to the church? Um, a couple of verses uh, Jesus teaching about this occurred to me. One of them is found in um, Luke chapter 14, where Jesus is talking about um, having people over for a banquet. We might say a dinner party or a barbecue or something. And he says, um, when, you, when you give a feast, and he goes on to list um, people who are outsiders, the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, I think there's a sense in which there, obviously Jesus is assuming that his disciples will be um, socializing, will be putting on banquets if they possibly can, and will be thinking about the marginalized. Um, obviously in the spiritual sense, all of our non-Christian friends are the marginalized, aren't they? They're ones that are not yet within um, the kingdom, not yet within um, mm -hmm. our church community. So thinking of them when we arrange our social calendar is really important. Also, then, a couple of pages later in, in Luke's Gospel, in Luke 16, um, Jesus te teaching about money um, says, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, you may receive, they may receive you into eternal dwellings. Don't have time to talk about that in detail, but one of the things it's saying is um, use our money to um, spend time with people, to um, spend it on friendships. Mm. So it's not wrong for us to actually now spend a bit more money maybe than we were a year ago on socialising, going to the cinema with someone, what, whatever it is. We do need to ask God for wisdom, though, um, in this, how to spend our time, how to spend our money with non-Christians. Um, but I would encourage people to think about phoning up their friends they haven't seen for a while, meeting up with them, going out with them, inviting them over. Obviously, be, be wise about how and where and who <laughs> but don't neglect them you know our, our non-christian friends have been struggling this last year in all the ways we have but without the comfort and hope of the gospel um, some of us watching this will need to hear i'd imagine um you know build build christian friendships prioritize um, people in the church and, and christian friendships others though need to hear don't neglect your non-christian friends it's a really hard tension um, and we are going to need wisdom. I've been thinking too recently about my neighbours um, during lockdown, especially the first one, but throughout the whole year, there has been a shared experience that we've all lived through, which has meant talking to people around us has been a bit easier, hasn't it? Um, so maybe thinking through and intentionally making sure you, you, you can have a chat over the garden fence or um, across across the road in the morning when you're dropping off your kids to school or whatever it is um, and thinking about how you could maybe invite people over or steer conversations towards talking about the gospel but I admit that 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 hasn't happened yet um, on our street I've been trying to get to know my neighbours but um, it has happened to me twice recently where I've got a taxi and through shared experience of lockdown, being able to speak to the, the driver, in both occasions, Muslims, about the gospel. Um, just because there's a really natural shared experience way into talking about it, I was able to say to them, you know, I'm part of a worshipping community. What's it been like for you as a Muslim? And then being able to talk to them about the gospel. So evangelistic opportunities, I think, are still there if we're in the habit of spending time with, with non-Christians where we possibly can. Thank you, John. Brilliant. Thank you guys so much for sharing those thoughts. And let me just pray for us, pray for us all um, for God's help. Uh, Heavenly Father, we do pray that you would help us. Um, Lord, we stand in need of your wisdom and how to live after a year that's um, perhaps changed our timings and habits in all sorts of ways. Lord, would by your spirit, would you show us perhaps blind spots that we've, we've missed, um, ways that we need to grow in, Lord? Would you help us to have healthy habits that help us to thrive. Thank you that you're our rock, you're our redeemer, you're the Lord of our lives. 
Father, we want to grow in love of you and love of those around us, both our Christian brothers and sisters and those who don't know you, know you yet. And we pray for this, um, that all the glory would go to our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen.